We're here. We're back. Thanks to everybody for tuning in. For those returning, we love you. For those just getting here, welcome to the party, pals. <laughs> Rick, get it. Let's go. That was driver. so cheesy. I love it. Buddy, that was a great intro. That was so cheesy. I love it. <laughs> Well, I'm your co-host, Ricky Liorti. And I'm your co-host, George Boutsalis. I didn't expect to pull that one out of my hat. That was really good, and I'm proud of that one. Uh, guys, this week, we had Edgy Veg. Very, very edgy episode. Also known as the lovely Candace Hutchings. Uh, Candace Hutchings, who also goes by Edgy Veg, is a vegetarian chef. You might have seen on YouTube or on Instagram. Uh, you might have picked up her book. She's a vegan chef. I should have clarified that, a vegan chef and a fantastic one at that. Uh, and one of the things that we loved most about this conversation is it was very candid, but the, Candace shared a perspective on kind of to each their own. She obviously believes what she believes and does what she does and, and is passionate about being a vegan chef, but she's very open-minded to, to how people should eat and how they should look at food. And it was honestly a, a very, very educational episode we really enjoyed talking to her she gave us some great recipes uh the way she approaches uh veganism and being vegan will uh will be really refreshing to a lot of people because it's not a you know one my way or the highway mentality it's just it's just teach their own and try new things and open up your world to something new don't be scared to, to venture into the unknown food is food and i mean if you make it right at the end of the day it all tastes great that's it rick over to you pal <laughs> well thanks Georgie. we'd like to give a shout out to our sponsors the first is cast app <laughs> George is laughing in the back. It's called Cast, and it's an app. Not yes. called Cast app. <laughs> it's a project that myself, Georgie, and DB, one of our good pals, have been working on for the last six months or so. We're just releasing our beta version this week. Depending on when you listen, this might actually be out. So go to www.createyourcast.com to be one of the first to download the app. If you don't know what it is, it's an anonymous voting-based social media platform that allows you to vote on current events, hot topics, debates, anonymously while also seeing the demographics behind who votes what way and while also being able to comment and try and sway people's votes. So if you haven't already, go to www.createyourcast.com and be one of the first to download it. We'd like to give a shout out to our second sponsor, Daydream Drinks, www.drinkdaydream.com. It's Canada's first sparkling water infused with hemp extracts and adaptogens. It comes in flavors such as blackberry chai, cucumber lime, and peach ginger we've been drinking them on the podcast for the last couple episodes and so and they've been great so check them out they've got zero sugar and their website again is www.drinkdaydream.com and georgie what do we say lfg my pal let's go don't do a sound test and there's no sound that's the oh, worst that would be bad. see for us it's good because we can always just see mm, it I actually yeah. have a, not really a funny story but that happened one time uh the mic on that, I used to have like a plug-in mic. It didn't, ca it didn't pick up, so I had to read lips and time because I have to line up <gasps> the audio to it. No. You know how hard it was? I, I actually I, guessed. One, really, I don't know how hard it is because I'm really lucky. I was like moving it and you shifting it. You have a lot it. more patience than I do. I would have been like, you know what? Let's just do it all over again. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's all good. You know what? We're good. Uh, yeah. We're good. Well, Candice, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. It's good having you. Um, I, I want to jump right into it. I know we talked a little bit off air about the, the turkey, this okay. the big vegan <laughs> okay. turkey. Uh, where'd the idea come from? How'd you start it? How'd you, I, I watched the video, but for the listeners who didn't. And also, how many people did you trigger? That's a word, trigger. <laughs> Over right? a million people yeah. are triggered. <laughs> They're really upset with me. Um, well, my business partner came up with the idea, I would say like in the summer, maybe even before then. And I was like, you're out of your mind. I'm not doing that. That's No. Like, there's just no way it's not going to look real enough and like people are going to hate it and vegans don't want something that looks like a dead animal on their like Thanksgiving table. And he's like, just try it for Thanksgiving. And I kind of put it off and I put it off and then he's like, do it for Christmas. I was like, fine. So I sat down and just kind of, it was, the turkey was a culmination of like everything I've done in 10 years in one recipe. So the base of it was, is a thing called seitan, which is like, um, it's made with vital wheat gluten, which is the protein from flour okay. or from wheat and with like jackfruit and tofu. So like the three things that all vegans use so to make. I know, yeah. Yeah, I know, I know tofu is the big protein for yeah. vegans. What are the other two again? Sorry. Uh, jackfruit. Jackfruit. Jackfruit's the one that you ever been, you've been to Southeast Asia. It's the one that they literally say you can't bring on to like trains and buses. Cause if you cut it open raw, 
it smells like pungent. No, that's durian. Durian, sorry. But yeah. are they similar? They look very similar. Oh, okay, sorry. They I look very similar. Durian. Jackfruit is actually um, where juicy fruit got its flavor from. It's based on the jackfruit. Oh, so you can have off. either sweet or you can have a young jackfruit, which means it's unripe. But when you cook with it, it has fibers like pulled pork or pulled chicken. Okay. And so it makes... Very, is this a big thing, a small thing? It's a really a big fruit, but okay. I buy it in a can. Okay. Yeah. And then, so that's jackfruit. And then what's the third one? Seitan. So Seitan. it's um, protein from wheat. Okay. Wheat. <laughs> wheat. So if you wash flour, um, what is left over is just like this like pile of protein. And so you can cook with it and it makes a really realistic like meat substitute. A lot of the um, Asian meat substitutes are based on that. Okay. So the, the like how you made the body of it and everything, that's just pure, yeah, like that's Satan? It, it's like uh, molding anything with dough. It's kind of like working with Play-Doh um, for, the, for the bones, like for the drumsticks. I had these just like bamboo little spoons. And so I used those and yeah. I molded it around it and then held it all together with toothpicks. But then for the skin, I used rice paper. So just marinated rice paper and put it all over it and then it got nice and crispy and you could tear it off like you could like normal turkey skin. It was really fun. Was it good? <laughs> it was really good. Are, are we are we confirming? Was it good down over there? 100%. Yeah, it was good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, you probably were eating that for a couple of days because it was massive. It was huge. Yeah. I made my staff, like my like videographer nice and my assistant. Turkey. Yeah. Um, my assistant actually put it in the freezer and then had it for Christmas dinner. Oh, so wow. she saved it. Was, was there perfect. like there was some there was stuffing inside it? Wasn't yes, it? Like, I stuffed it. Yeah. And what did you just it's like like regular Just stuffing stuffing like yeah yeah normal wow mm -hmm. honestly i saw it and i was like i was talking about this before but rick was like he's like yeah made a turkey like a vegan turkey i was like i don't even understand how how to figure that out in my head and i saw it and like it looks it like sense, yeah. you know what we'll we'll bing there we'll put it up there <laughs> right now rick always asked me to like superimpose things and i always forget i'll remember jordan make sure you make a note i'll superimpose <laughs> the video, superimpose the video so they can right see here. it yeah like a picture yeah it was really cool when you put it in the pot too it like it yeah. legit looks like a turkey. it was in the roasting pot everything i i basted it and it, we, we obviously heard before about eight hours. This was an yes. eight-hour shoot. It was an eight-hour shoot. Uh, the main thing is that you have to knead the dough for 20 minutes. Okay, so so with I'm you. not doing that. I have a... <laughs> <laughs> so you got somebody else that does that. No, I actually have a stand mixer. So oh. I just put on the kneading function, and then it just goes for 20 minutes really fast. Okay. I used to do it by hand, you know, before Shit. I could afford the stand mixer. <laughs> like when I first quit my job and started doing this, um, then it was a lot of hard work, well, but never again. How long have you been doing this for? About 10 years, almost 10 years. I went vegan 10 years ago, but then um, it was like a weird blog first. What was it? That, was it called The Edgy Veg? Uh, yes. Was it? Yes, it was called The Edgy Veg. Um, it didn't have a name for a while, but then I just kind of threw something up there. And my mom kept wanting my recipes, and that's kind of why I started the blog. She kept asking me for these. Is your family vegan? Sorry. My mom's mostly vegetarian. Um, well, no, she was mostly vegetarian when I was younger, and now she's mostly vegan. She... Um, is a really bad cook and is like an old kind of hippie, like the original old school vegan hippie where um, growing up she made, we didn't have medicine in our house really. There's a lot of natural <laughs> stuff, a lot of beige food, a lot of like herbs and all of that. So um, I have that background a little bit, which I think is why the vegan thing stuck, but uh, not a great cook. <laughs> so did you when you first started were you a good cook or did you not cook at all when you first started I was a good cook because my mom was a bad cook so <laughs> when I was younger and she was a single mom so it was a lot of me stepping up and so I cooked for my sisters a lot my grandmother was a fantastic cook um, and I just always had an interest in it. I think mainly it was like a way to survive <laughs> eating in my house um, but yeah I always had an interest in it and then it just kind of got better and better. But when I first went vegan 10 years ago, we didn't have any of the substitutions we have now. So I started putting these recipes together and she wanted them and, and then her friends wanted them and I really got tired of emailing them to everybody. So I just put up a blog and it kind of just snowballed from there. One after the other. Yeah. After the other, yeah. yeah. And video was just the next natural step after, you know, a blog. Yeah. Why, why, I wanted to ask, why'd you go vegan? I didn't know this. I had a lot of health issues when I was younger. Um, I had really bad skin. I got migraines. I spent three days a week with migraines. I used to miss a lot of school when I was a kid. And I had a doctor that figured out that it was some issue with dairy because the minute I stopped eating dairy, they kind of went away. Um, so he kind of thought maybe 
we should test out removing animal proteins altogether and see how that affected like my skin. I had um, psoriasis, you know, stomach issues, headaches. And after I did that, it, it was just gone. Um, so it was a health, it was a health thing to start, but then it was just an animal thing. I saw a poster actually when I first moved to Toronto in the TTC that said, um, it had a a cat and a pig on it. I think it was. And it said, why love one animal and eat another? And I grew up around animals. I grew up in the country. So I was like, Oh shit, that makes too much sense to go home and eat a pizza right now. (laughs) So that's kind kind of, of that's why it's stuck. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever, has there ever been dimes since then? Like any point where you've craved meat at all or any, any animal products, I guess? Um, cheese is still something that haunts me a little bit, but it's come a long way. We have so many great vegan cheeses now that like, I don't even really think about it. Um, meat, definitely not. Like I couldn't even like things like in vitro meat or lab grown meat. I think it's a great thing. It's a great technology. I think that we should move forward with that. But I always get asked, are you going to eat it? No, I just... It's been 10 years. I just have no craving for the actual meat itself. And at this point, it kind of grosses me out. Yeah, yeah, fair. George, actually, question for you. Have you done like a consistent period of vegan? Of I've never vegan? done vegan. I did uh, vegetarian once for a month when I was in India because I figured it's like the easiest place, like the m- most vegetarian yeah. thing in the world. Like, every <laughs> menu I walk in, it was like I didn't have to think what I need to order. So I did that for a month. It wasn't, it wasn't hard by any means. Mind you, like you're on vacation, so you're just whatever. I'm actually doing vegetarian now for this month. You know, like sober or not sober October, dry January. Plus, yeah. it's like whatever. Let me cut out meat for the month and see. Honestly, not as it's only been a week, but not as hard <laughs> as I thought so far. Like, I'm eating a lot of salad. I am hungry all the time. Like, okay, I'm just, like, well, you need a to lot message food. me then because well, that's I'll make sure you're not. Yeah, <laughs> hungry all really the well. time. You can eat things that are not salad. <laughs> no, I know. I, honestly, I mean a mix of things. The hardest thing for me why I didn't go vegan is because cheese is my kryptonite. Yeah, like I eat if you feta cheese is on it. Every, literally everything I eat. You're Greek. Yeah. I'm German. We, there's a lot of cheese in yeah. European diets. Yeah. So that was why that was so hard for me. One thing that's interesting that I didn't know, um, and you might have to fact check this, but I went uh, one day to like a, I went for a physical. And there was a nutritionist there. I was talking to her, and she's asking me like, how much do you eat for this and this, and telling me kind of the portion sizes. And she's like, how much cheese do you eat? And I was like, I'm Greek. You're a lot of feta. She's like, how much in a week? I was like, I don't know, like a fist a day, probably equivalent, maybe. She's like, you're supposed to eat that much in like a week. I, or so, I think some of that, like my was eating like three or four times the amount. Oh my God. Maybe if I check the, 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 if I check the diet, like what the average human should eat and cheese, whatever, dairy, like I overconsume it for sure. Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, I thought that was really interesting because she told me that. I was like, mm, maybe I should. You know, eat. we're only supposed to eat like in terms of meat, just a deck of cards is like the portion size for a human being and meat. Like diet. Like you're saying when you like per, eat per a plate. Like, a plate. Yeah. Per, per meal, meal. Yeah. Per meal okay. like the portion size. Yeah, yeah. six ounces. Just, they say just right? a deck of cards. It's, like it's so much meat. smaller than anything that we're. That's a lot. Three, three cups. cups? Is a yeah, lot. that that can't be right. That's three cups is like this. That's <laughs> where they're, they're gonna work on. Yeah, yeah you guys work on that <laughs> in the back. <laughs> There's no way. No, that's that, right. Honestly, it's like Okay, um, that's uh, debatable. Right <laughs> debatable Got a little of a scientific peer reviewed paper. We're going to get the Narcity, the Narcity post up. <laughs> um, imagine. Wait, how do we get on the topic of cheese again? I was, I was asking was, you about have you ever done vegan? Sorry, no, yes. I, I, ha- I, I haven't. Have you? I do. Me and John, my brother, we did uh, vegan Wednesdays for about, probably about three or four months, I want to oh, say. That's cool. Well, just there's this really good vegan place um, that's like a fast food vegan place in Brampton. They have them all over uh, Copper. Copper Branch? Copper Branch. Yeah, we really enjoy it. The only problem is like it's really expensive eating because like, yeah. I eat a lot and we do intermittent fasting as well. So it's you're basically eating the three meals in the whatever 16 hours that we were doing it. So, okay, you have a massive lunch. Then I was having a salad has my pre-dinner like dinner, dinner, I guess. And then my dinner was a good salad. <laughs> you right? eat like him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pre, yeah, pre-dinner, <laughs> pre-lunch. Yeah, everybody knows, yeah. <laughs> pre-lunch, <laughs> lunch, lunch. lunch. <laughs> No, I, yeah, it's, yeah, so that's all right. We, we did it and it was, it's nice to do once a week. I just find that it's hard if you're on the go to mm. eat vegan. Yeah. You know, like, that's where I find was the hardest. Cause my, I guess that like, because I, I haven't been forced ever to do it, like where I have to do it for health reasons or I just made a choice. I'll like, let's say I'm doing vegetarians, but let's say I even did vegan and I was like, I do intermittent fasting too. But if I was absolutely like had nothing to eat and I was in a rush, had a meeting, I'd be like, you know what? Take the easy road out. Here's kind of, that's kind of the, the, it's bad. You shouldn't do it. I guess if you're going to stick to it, stick to it. But yeah, that's, that's a tough I mean, it's getting tough. a lot easier now. Um, well, how'd you, even, how'd you do it when you were younger? Uh, I mean, we didn't have like 
Beyond Meat Burgers at every single That's fast food I mean. place. Um, it was a lot of me like having granola bars in my bag, protein bars. Um, I used to that walk around. of nuts and stuff? Yeah, pretty much. I had just like a, you know on Mary Poppins how she has that like carpet Little, bag of yeah. never ending <laughs> food? It was pretty much like that everywhere <laughs> I went. Because even Dude, 10 years ago, sorry to cut no, you go ahead, go ahead. I don't think like even supplement companies were where they are now where there's vegan supplement brands and you can right. have a vegan shake. Oh my God, the, the go vegan protein back then was so I didn't bad. Think about this. That's what we should have reached out to for this episode. <laughs> Yeah, they were. I've actually so I had a vegan one maybe even a couple of years ago. It was just so like grainy bad, and I had one recently, maybe half a year ago or so. Like they've come a long way, a and long they're way. getting exponentially better. Like it was really like this, and now they're starting to really take off more. But yeah, it was. Uh, we have a lot of protein powder in our house. Yeah. Um, and so I think we've tried like every single brand. What's your favorite? Oh, there we that, have. Was one? it Vega? Vega isn't that? Oh, Vega? I hate it. Wait. <laughs> okay so jordan do not reach out to that <laughs> there i hate it i have a thing with stevia and all of these companies use stevia to sweeten their protein isn't that the natural sweetener though yeah but it's so gross is it? What <laughs> it is, tastes like also, aspartame uh, to me there's also the one like a erythritol or a re or oh yeah it's, it's like an Go alcohol sugar yeah, or something kind of, yeah, well, like what's a good one a good pro vegan protein um we tried one most recently called ghost you know, oh, um, the one that we're taking right now is, um, oh my God, what is it called? That's, that's, that's one I've ever tried. Bring me my phone. <laughs> <laughs> we're going blank here, we're going blank. <laughs> it, but anyway, this this company uses um, like odds and ends of um, like irregular fruits and vegetables to make their product. So it's like using, not like scraps, but all the food that, that people don't want. If you were want. like buying, like if, can, you, if you bought canned jackfruit, they take the top that they don't put in the can, blend it They use it to make their product. So in all the food that grocery stores can't sell because it's not perfect enough. So it's like imperfect, irregular yeah, foods. Yeah. Um, but I, I'll find the name of it. Why do that? I actually want to give a shout out to one of my good girlfriends, Sabrina. She's uh, She owns a, a juice company and what they started doing with the excess material that they don't use for the juice they're making dog treats. So they're vegan dog treats. Well, I got, obviously they're vegan because it's all vegetables. Yeah, yeah. But they're dog treats and they're super healthy for dogs. And I, I don't know the full story, but, you know, shout out you, Sabrina. For, shout out to Sabrina. It's for, a good story. Yeah, yeah, it is. You know, like you find, you know, a way to make sure that you're using everything. Yeah. Kind of on the topic that she was mentioning. And yeah. Perfect time because now she found. Oh, no. I, I, <laughs> was like, I was like, I can't find it, but I'll, okay, we'll, I'll we'll get give up back on it. No to you. Worries, no worries. Um, yeah, so I wanted to ask, what was the first? Um, do you remember what the first recipe you put on the blog was? Or yeah, it was okay. an eggplant tomato sauce gnocchi. Oh. Wow, it was really good. You know what the best part is? I know our moms <laughs> are going to be like all over her blog in the next 100%. week, like making these, <laughs> making these. Okay, Ricky, I was on her blog. I saw this recipe for this, you know, super. No shepherd's pie, meatless pie, and that's what I'm making tomorrow. Moms love me. Well, I, was, I, saw, I saw your <laughs> I don't doubt that. And it's like women, 75%, male, 25%. Like, yeah. yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah it's funny. It's, uh, I mean, I'm 32. I don't have kids, but it's a lot of women my age that have children. And then like women in their 50s and 60s that are having that like second life that they tend to get at that yeah. age yeah, where they're like, like moms, yeah, they start moms. working out again. Yeah. They really care about what they're eating. And so that's kind of my demographic and I love it. I get these messages from little old ladies. They make my day. It's going to be like our moms <laughs> for sure. Do you, oh yeah. Do you 100%. find that the, I guess, vegan movement has grown a lot over the last 10 years? Oh my God, yeah. I um, guess that was a rhetorical question. The last <laughs> five years, the last two years even, like it's just, it's exponential. It just keeps going and going and going. And I think that's mainly, it's less to do with like the animals. And I think it's because we're in this climate, huh, with climate change, <laughs> um, where everyone's thinking about the environment, at least people our age and younger. Um, and then just because we have such an unsustainable food system. So I don't think it has anything to do with the animals. I think people are just more willing to reduce their meat and dairy intake just for the betterment of the planet. Um, so that's been really interesting to watch because now all these like huge companies that would never have done this in a million years are now coming out with really awesome vegan products, yeah. which is great. It is cool. And I think that's also another point too. I think that because of the ease of access, I guess, I mean, obviously the education around it, the ease of availability, it makes it a lot easier too. Um, you know, like if, I think because like the awareness is rising as well with stuff like you said, like the climate and all that, you know, if I'm, if you're walking down Queen street and you're, you see the McDonald's, the corner, or you see across the street, there's, you know, like a little health food store or whatever you're going to pop it. I mean, at least, 
typically I do. I feel a little more guilty. And I've been like, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love McDonald's every now and then. But like you see it, you're like, okay, like why wouldn't I just take the the easy, healthier choice kind of thing? I mean, McDonald's is coming out with their own vegan burger. Oh, are they really? Yeah, Who was the first one to do it? It was um, A&W, right? Yeah. Yeah. What was it called? The The Beyond Beyond Meat Burger. Yeah, Beyond Beyond Meat Burger. Yeah, yeah. They were the first ones to really like popularize. Popularize. Yeah, popularize uh, vegan fast food. Yeah, it well, was. then there's this there's this big chain in the states, and it came to Canada. It was almost going to be a part of it called Buy Chloe. Yeah. So that was a big one in the states. It came to Yorkdale, and I think obviously COVID <laughs> shut it down. But um, yeah, like, there's a whole bunch of them in the state. There's uh, another one in New York, something Butcher, the Beyond Butcher or something. No. Uh, oh yes, I know what you're talking. There's a about. whole bunch of them. There's right? a few, yeah. It's it's the really, Good Butcher. The no, good butcher. is that the one? I think they're in Vancouver. Healthy Butcher. Health, uh, I don't know. Whatever, something. <laughs> As a butcher, Something if you're in butcher vegan. New York, let us know. We'll, uh, we can take some free, some free uh, vegan products. Yeah, I mean, fast food was the first thing that people really veganized. I think it's just a lot easier to veganize because a lot of it's deep fried and breaded. Yeah. <laughs> so it was just an e- things like nuggets, chicken burgers, that sort of thing. Now people are more looking into like the nuance of food and like higher end and like um, kind of like haute gastronomy type yes, foods yes. is kind of what we're looking at now. Which is kind of like that, like the, for lack of, I guess, a better description, like the Michelin star type, like those nice yeah. dinners, nice mm-hmm. meals, everything. And they're kind of going more towards like. I went to um, in Berlin. Was it Berlin? Yes, it was Berlin. It's the only Michelin rated vegetarian restaurant. I was literally just going to ask that. It's, it's mind blowing. Like it's all vegetables. They don't like throw any um, like meat substitutes. Nothing's trying to be something that it's not, but you've never tasted vegetables like this chef puts it together. And it's so over the top. I think I got a salad served on like a plank of wood with the bark still <laughs> still on it. And like it was foamed and everything else, but it's beautiful. But it's really cool to see that people are thinking of kind of reinventing vegetables they were always kind of on the side you know? yeah true it was always kind of afterthought like uh, yeah. people know they're healthy for you but well, like the side yeah like no honestly yeah actually one thing that i um we've no, talked nobody's about ordering is, asparagus as their main right like but i actually yeah. saw so i when i uh i've eaten at a i've been lucky enough to eat a couple michelin stars one i had was in um uh copenhagen and uh which i Copenhagen has a bunch of them. Like yeah, it's like a they, really well known. That's a good I didn't go to Noma. Food. Noma, I guess, was was one of that you you know what Noma's famous for? The best were the best restaurant in the world. One of their big things was eating ants. Um on their you know what? No? no idea. Anyways, and the one I went to, the word ants, I'm they did, about uh, like, um, Zoolander. The what, but to the point of like um <laughs> about like vegan and all that stuff, they did a their one of their desserts was uh like choc- or chocolate of the forests, I think. And they basically brought it out. It was two chocolate looking. They look like eggs, but they were like dairy free vegan chocolates. And they look like eggs. They built this little tiny forest in a bowl. So like it looked like you were pulling eggs out of a little forest. And like it was the be- one of the best chocolates I've ever eaten. It's like it a like, Alice in Wonderland experience. Yeah, really cool. But they did the whole thing. And it was like their vegan it's like part of it. Yeah. Really nice. Yeah, really cool. God, now I'm hungry. Yeah. I'm I know what you were just saying. I didn't eat before. They said how terrible. I, I like, I honestly, they told him, I was like, we should have told her to bring some snacks or something <laughs> like, like vegan cupcakes or whatever. Oh, my God. We didn't even think yeah. about it. I was like, oh, that would have been great. But um, I want to ask something. What would you say? I, I'm not vegan. I, I respect the people who are and I, you know, teach their own. What would you say to someone who's anti vegan? You know, just I love meat. There's no way I'm ever going to give up meat. Um, I mean, it's even reducing your meat intake makes a huge difference. Oh, so you're not like just all vegan. There's no other side. I mean, okay. you find that, sorry to one thing, it's like you find that a lot of vegans are like, I'm vegan, I'm vegan. The vegan's the way to go. If you're not vegan, you're dead to me kind of thing. You know, right. like, that's the stereotypical. They're like militant yeah. vegan police. Type. Yeah, yeah. So for me, I I tend to be more realistic about things. I'm very practical. I'm German. Okay, it's we're very practical, like very, <laughs> it's in a straight line. We like to <laughs> be efficient. So um, would I like the whole world to go vegan? Sure. Is it going to happen? Probably not. So instead of being, you know, a ve- another vegan militant police figure, I'd rather just feed you good food and maybe encourage you to a couple times a week, you know, have a vegan day or a vegetarian day and kind Substitute of, a couple of things. yeah, exactly. I find that it's more effective to advocate <laughs> to someone that's really anti-vegan just by feeding them. I always call it leading with a fork. Like just oh, feed like them, that. just yeah. feed them. Leading with a fork. No one's going to say no to that's food. a good tagline there. 
That's yeah. it. It's really interesting too because, and that's a great approach to take to it. But I also think that like, you know, pe- I, I think, I think we had someone on this podcast that talked about the concept of food and how just people, they the way they look at it, like you, it's kind of like, you know, you have this way, you have raised it this way and you see it this way. So you're yep. so used to it and you really think like, you know, and I was very guilty of this being in a, you know, European household, you know, meats and veggies and all that. Um, but like you see like, you know, I eat steak, if you have steak now, for example, and, and asparagus and all that, and you have a healthy meal, not saying don't eat it if it makes you feel good and you're healthy, but it's not going to kill you to substitute it out and try something new. Yeah. Honestly, the reason I went vegetarian is just to try it and see how, how my body feels. Maybe I'll feel worse in the 30 days. Maybe I'll feel better. To be honest, I feel a lot less bloated this week. But I mean, if more people kind of experiment it a little bit, because it does seem like there's that divide, right? There's the ones that say it's bad. You have to do it. It's better for the for the world. There's other sides that says there's no way I'm going to do it. It's all hokey pokey. Well, and a lot of people... Whatever, like, tend to get defensive because they think that you're ta- like you're trying to take their meat away from them yeah. like they, the the defenses go up right away so if i start talking and they all and i kind of get two types of people it's the people that get really defensive like don't take my meat away from me and i'm like okay bro chill <laughs> um and then there's okay, pump, pump the brakes <laughs> and then there's the other half that kind of thinks you like they feel bad. They're like, oh, you know, and all of a sudden they're giving excuses as to why they're not vegan. I'm like, dude, I don't really fucking care. I don't <laughs> care. Like, you don't have to make it weird. Now you've made it weird for everybody. <laughs> so, no, but going back to like nostalgia of food, food is, it's an emotion. It's a, it's a memory trigger and not to plug my book, but that's why I wrote my cookbook. It's all. Great segue. I great love, segue. I love that. I've, I I've done this that. before. I respect it. That's <laughs> smooth. Sorry, we did, that, honestly, I respect that let's, let's get into it sorry didn't mean to cut you off that was good that was but really that's good. for me it was an emotional thing yeah. especially with being european and there's a lot of tradition and um you know memories around these recipes oh thank you um memories around dishes that it literally reminded me of my omi and my opa and that sort of thing and so those were the first things that i veganized it was kind of um all of the foods that we loved as kids i'm i'm gonna preface this with like millennial kids like kids of the 90s because that's how i grew up so you know a lot of the mac and cheese spaghetti and meatballs um and then a lot of foods from my heritage that i just loved eating i had to recreate those because i was really sick and tired of feeling left out well germans very meat and potatoes like oh my god it's beige food everything it's yeah and it's very heavy (laughs) yeah yeah it's very heavy it's very beige and now i can eat so much more of it (laughs) <laughs> yeah, doesn't stop. I, like I, because I, I've I've been uh, I've been to Berlin and Munich and like don't get me wrong, like love it there, love the food and everything. But yeah, yeah it's a lot. You go into like a you know beer hall and they just bring you a platter and it's meat and a and then you throw the and, beer and, on top of it. Yeah, You're like where did they put it? Yeah. So have your has your family taken to it? Like, do they are they experimenting with it? But now, yeah, or? my um, sister actually after Christmas, so I made schnitzel for um, my family for Christmas and after Christmas. And after having that meal, she kind of was like, you know what? I think I could do this. I think it's a lot easier now. And I got a message from her two days ago. And it was just a photo of all the meat substitutes that she found at her local grocery store. And it was just simple, basic things. You know, she easily could sw- um, swap out her yogurt, her butter. And that's kind of the thing I tell people. It's, not, it's only as difficult as you make it. Yeah. Like when you go into the milk section, you do have a vegan option right there. And chances are you're not going to be able to tell the difference once you put it in your coffee or in your cereal or you cook with it. Same thing with butter. There's vegan basil now, margarine. They they also make like a butter version. So there's all these great substitutes that you don't really think about, but they make a huge difference. So like maybe keep your steak, but when you make your, I don't know, Bernays sauce, use a vegan butter. Yeah, yeah it, it is getting a lot easier too, but and like you, if you you made a point about when you go to the grocery store now and you make and you get these things. When you're making something at home, nine times out of ten, I gu- guarantee if you make something proper, like cook it thoroughly or make a, like a nice recipe, you're not gonna tell the difference. Like you put yeah. a, a in front of a person and they'll blindfold on. Like unless you are a culinary expert or you're a foodie, whatever, even then it'll be hard to tell the difference if someone cooks it well. Right. I mean, if you weren't a good cook before you went vegan, you're not gonna magically become <laughs> a good cook just because you're vegan. It's the yeah. same thing. Like I always tell people. If you just suck, find, you suck. <laughs> yeah, if you suck, you suck. No, um, take your like 10 most loved recipes and then f- veganize those. Start with those 10 um, and make it recipes that you love. Like I said, like if you hated kale, 
before you went vegan, you're going to love it because magically <laughs> <laughs> veganism made you love kale. Like make the recipes that you love and start e- by like swapping out easy things. Buy the store bought versions of it if you don't want to make it at home because it's too much work. And then it tends to just get easier and it, you stop thinking about it. Yeah. That's actually a really good advice because I think that applies universally to a lot of things. But, you know, people think that doing something healthy, I got to go all in at once. Right. And, you know, I got to switch this. I mean, if you do baby steps, little by little becomes a little easier. Bite off little pieces, right? Like Yeah. I mean, we don't expect gonna... humans to jump in with both feet for anything else. So I don't know where this notion that your diet has to be both feet in at the same time, like disrupting your life. Changing the way that you eat disrupts your life. For sure. And oh, for we sure. don't expect people to like give up anything like that. So I don't know why we expect people to do it with their food. It's just such an idiotic way of thinking about it. And I never and understood that's, like, that. One of the most essential things in like in our existence that we need besides water really. Yeah. Like, is, I, is, I can't remember who it was. I don't know if it was you, George, or not. I don't think it was you actually. So someone did the carnivore diet when Joe Rogan did it whatever, six months ago, a year ago. I didn't and do it. So w- one of my friends, I like who was, yeah, don't you just no, shit yourself. No, 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 no. So wait, wait, he did this meat <laughs> diet where he was eating heavy meats five times a day. And I was like, yo, good for you. Like if that's what your body likes, you know, kudos to you. I respect it. And he's like, yeah, but I'm like shitting f- like five times. Now. I'm like, well, what do you expect? It's meat. Like, what? Well, you used to obviously eat meat with heavy salt because it retain, you need to retain the water. Because yeah. carbs retain water, and if you don't have the carbs, yeah. the, the meat doesn't hold as much. So you have to put heavy salt on it, and it just like... Pfft. Yeah, but that's what that I'm like. How do you... Awful. Yeah. I'm like, how would you not expect to, sh- to poo five times? Apparently, times after a little while, your body adjusts. There's always a different camps. Like, yeah. I've, I've read, read into it a little bit, and it's that, you know, the belief of... Because... What's his name? Jordan Peterson is the first person I heard that did it because his daughter had uh, um, autoimmune disease, she did it, and the disease went away, so that there was a big proponent of it. Then he brought it to Joe Rogan, and then that kind of how it snowballed. But I remember when I first heard about it, I looked into it, and the, the theory is that we derive from hunters, not gatherers, so that's the school of thought. I'm not saying I agree one way or the other, I just that's where it came from. So people do it because they say our bodies back in the day was designed to, sorry, just eat meat, whatever, but I don't, I don't feel I like I should. I think really like, also, though, that's the same thing of like a one, one size fits all, because you're telling me that everybody back then around the entire planet ate the same way yeah Yeah. and it's interesting right like (laughs) right it's but it's also everything in moderation i think yeah back to your point as well i mean look if it makes you feel good eating meal time i can't i don't know how i love me i do love me like i can eat steak but i just i can't fathom that but if that's what makes you happy cool do it but it really should be everything in moderation and to your point like you said earlier um you know, the meat portion that you should be eating. It doesn't have to be a, the majority of your plate, right? I think you should start with vegetables at the end of the day because it gets the vitamins, the nutrients, One all that One steak stuff. in, I think it's the 40s, would feed an entire family for like a meal. <laughs> think about that. One steak. Ricky eats one by himself. <laughs> <laughs> but like that's where we've come with food. Like that's how yeah. our yeah. portions keep getting bigger. The, <clears throat> the, we um, keep getting bigger. We keep getting bigger. And I mean, yeah, go vegan for health reasons. That's great. Whatever. That's not what, I mean, I did it because headaches and that sort of thing but um for me it's just an it's an animal thing and i can't look at my dogs and like eat a piece of like it would be weird for for me that's Uh, that's an important thing and you said it too it's to each their own and whatever feels right for you everybody's body is different maybe eating meat cured this jordan peterson's daughter of her autoimmune disease but doesn't mean it's going to cure everybody of their autoimmune disease of course yeah you know it helped you with your skin and your headaches and migraines doesn't mean it's going to help everybody else. Exactly. It's to do what's right. Well, do what feels good for your body. But at the same time, try everything. Try it at least once. Try going vegan. Try going vegetarian. Try doing this. Try doing that. Because well, at the end of the day, you're never going to know what's right for your body until you do it. Same thing right. with like working out. You don't know what's good for your body, what type of workouts your body's really going to excel at until you try them all. And then say, okay, you know what? I did this for a couple weeks. I did this for a couple weeks. I did this. You know what? I felt the best while I was doing this. Well, I, I think- um, my partner, Louie, so we watched Game Changers. Shout out Louis. Have you seen? Shout out Louis. <laughs> yes. <Hi>. Previous <laughs> guest episode 60-ish, give or take. So, yeah. Give or take. Well, he watched Game Changers. Yeah. yeah. If you, have you seen it? Yep, yep. Yeah. So we watched it. And then at the end of it, he kind of turned to me. He's like, I'm going to do it. And he did it for, what was it, 30 days? You started 30 days? Uh, no, 100. Oh, 100 days. And he started oh, with did, like the blood it, work. Like, he did everything. And... Wow. He's now vegan mainly for him. The draw was health and he was, you know, his, what, what are they called? Their, your best, what personal best lifts were being vegan after a hundred days. What? No, I was just going to say all my key health indicators. I did a full blood work. Yeah, all your KPIs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, with my medical director from the, my clinic. 
through the Iron Man, and every single key health indicator dramatically improved. Like, Come on, just, okay. I kept my diet the same. Sugar intake didn't change, alcohol intake didn't change, but every, like hemoglobin, everything. Like the, my volume of red blood cells. I didn't even think about this. We should here. Yeah, I'm bring the mic on. over there. You know, just because I'm just realizing we're having a silence. <laughs> yeah, we're no yeah. We need some respect. No, I, it can look here, but we got to pick it up better. Yeah. Um. And I say? think I remembered the name of this protein company. You got it. Well, we yeah, yeah, here. I have one point. Well, I can't forget this point. Okay, yeah, let's get the quick rundown. Yeah. Um, so I did blood work right before uh, the uh, the switch to full vegan. Uh, didn't change my sugar intake, alcohol intake. Like literally just swapped out and became 100% plant-based milk and all that crap. And then with my uh, personal trainer, I also set like new targets for, I, I had plateaued at deadlifts for like a year and a half. And I was at like 285 with my one rep max. And by the end of the 100 days, I'd increase it to 345. Jeez. Um, my red, bl red blood cell count increased so much. Uh, my medical director, who's an Iron, uh, Ironman triathlete, um, he's like, I only see these increases this kind of increase with athletes that go train in higher altitudes. He's like, I've never seen this type of increase from just a dietary change. Like all my kinks, I've had three knee surgeries, my pain in my knees gone, my mm. back tweaks that I was having for years on end gone, uh, energy levels are through the roof. Wow. Like e every single indicator. And I told her, I'm like, I'll do this, but at the 100 day mark, if, my, if the health indicators stay the same, I'll keep the switch because it's good for the environment. If they go down, I'm going back. I figured that was like a fair well, And this is perfect because you gave me enough time to look up that protein company. <laughs> <laughs> and they're called... It was all a plan. <laughs> they're called Outcast... I, up, blah, 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 blah. Outcast Upcycled Nutrition. Outcast Upcycled Nutrition. Yeah, they have a, like Jordan a Fruit Yonet? Loops flavor. It's oh, real that's good. Oh, that's my... Fruit Loops. Tastes like... like you know, when you had Fruit Loops as a kid, and then that cereal milk yeah, flavor—that's yeah, yeah. that's what it tastes. I got like. a, I got a story. Like Momofuku milk bar. Oh, yeah. I got a story yeah. about about Fruit Loops. You I want to hear it. Yeah, let's. <laughs> when I was uh, <laughs> when I was in grade eight, I think, um, I went to a Raptors game with my mom. And they had this coloring con. Maybe I was younger than grade eight because it was a coloring contest in the gallery. <laughs> that boy puts himself on so blast at fifteen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> coloring contest. I colored like a, I don't know, some Kellogg's coloring contest. So I did it. Go to my seats right before halftime. They come up and they say, "George, you one of the winners. You're gonna play hot potato at half court at halftime." I was like, "Oh, okay, cool." I think I was younger than grade eight, but anyways. Um, so I go to <laughs> half court with like twelve right. kids, and I didn't know what the prize was. Nothing. They're just like, "Go on the court." So we start playing hot potato. I'm the, I'm in the finals. Everyone gets limited. It's me and a girl. Music stops. I like she has the ball last. They're like you win. I was like, "Cool, what I win?" They're like a year supply of any Kellogg cereal you want, plus like a signed jersey and some other things. That's the best on the prize microphone. Ever. I was like, I yelled out like a little fat joy. I'm like, "Give me Fruit Loops!" <laughs> <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> but, but, yeah, they brought a skid of Fruit Loops to my house. We had to give it away. It was. I don't know how big it would be in this perspective, but it took up our entire garage. That seems waste wasteful. They should just like give you an, an allotted amount like every month yeah. for like yeah. a year yeah. or well, something. I remember it was one of the I don't know, man. George is thick, man. George not a eat a lot skid. of food. I had a bad calories. Day. I ate a lot of breakfast, lunch, dinner, fruit loops. Like I would sit with a box, watch TV, just like eating. Well, we anyways. are adults that love cereal. It's a problem. Okay. We have like what, at least three different types of cereal in our house at all times. It's like a, I feel like a kid sometimes because I'm like, it's 10 o'clock and I want to <laughs> eat something. Cereal. So I didn't realize how expensive cereal was. Though. Right? Like the family is size it? box of like uh, Fruit Loops is like 10 bucks. Like no wonder my mom never bought it for yeah. us. Yeah. She was a single mom <laughs> and I was like, ah, we get the no name brand. No, <laughs> Elaine always hooked us up. We always had like Cinnamon Toast Crunch. See, my parents didn't buy a lot of cereal. I never. Oh, we had cereal for, me and my brother Maybe. had cereal for breakfast every single morning. And it was almost like, because basically if you have... Every other day, you're refilling the, bil the milk bag. If yeah. you're having two bowls, me and my brother, right? So every other day, we'd basically almost like have to race to see who can get some, the milk first so the other person has to fill up the bowl. Because you can't fill up your bowl and then go get the milk because then the cereal gets soggy. You know what I'm talking Is that just yeah. me? No, well, I get it. I know what you yeah. mean. It's, really, like, it's fun. Also, it's like, I totally pour the milk in the bowl without the cereal and go refill the milk. I totally forgot about bagged milk. Yeah. Oh, I yeah, haven't bought I that in so long. Oh, my God. I only I think I bought it because I lived like at home before university, day, like way back like years ago. I don't, like, even I don't now, cook. So. I don't buy, even now I don't buy a lot of milk. But No, I, yeah. we go through a lot of soy milk and oat milk in our house. Yeah, but that doesn't go See, bad, right? Is it not like really. You, it six stays, months or something. I mean, if you buy the aseptic 
um, containers, the ones that are like shelf stable, you can keep them for like six months. But it never lasts that long in our place because he drinks a lot of protein powder. <laughs> you know, the I, personally, I'm a bigger fan. So I've had like when I get coffee sometimes, I usually have it black, but sometimes I'll get oat milk or almond milk, a splash of almond milk. I find like almond milk, most milk substances I don't mind. Oat milk, I find, does taste a lot like a little grainier, maybe, or like yeah. I guess oaty. Like it has a more stronger taste than the other ones. Yeah, and a lot of people soy I find is my like favorite because it. it's the creamiest. Okay. In coffee, I just, it blends more seamlessly, okay. I guess. Okay. And Tea it's store? creamy. Okay. I had oat milk once recently and I was like, oh, not for me. Like I, the rest I don't mind, but that one was, I don't, did not like it. Not maybe it was fan. a crap brand. Might have been. <laughs> uh, one thing I wanted to bring back earlier that we were talking about before we kind of, had a little sidebar. Yeah, no was, idea um, what we were, uh, we were talking about everyone trying a little bit, like get, getting one foot in, one foot out kind of thing. And it also goes back to the point you brought up about food being nostalgia and emotional and all that stuff. And, you know, it's funny. Like there's always, there's those camps, right? Like I believe this, I believe this, I believe that. And it's like, you know, you're wrong and I'm right. And you're and er, it happens in every facet of the world. But food is a, is a big Hotly contested topic. People like to debate about it, yeah. whether it's diet versus diet or just food types. You know, McDonald's. Grown versus men get King. upset with me when they find out that I'm <laughs> vegan. It's like they have to like protect. We, we should like read the comments at towards the end of this episode. We'll just read some comments. We should. Like grown men threaten me. I'm like, bro. But see, that's the thing. Is like you know, if everyone You're not like you looking made a- great right now. <laughs> You made a point that if like if everyone tried a little bit of something, just to step out. You know, honestly, step out your comfort zone a little. Like. It's not like you're going to go in, like you're going to eat something that's going to poison you, you're going to die. Like, try a little, change a little. You don't have to like it, but see, like, what is it? Har- what is the harm in trying a, a vegan turkey right. or something? Like, are you going to die? If you don't like it, don't eat it. But, like, then you kind of put yourself in someone else's perspective and say, oh, okay, I see. It's not terrible. And I see why they enjoy it. It has health benefits for right. them. And we can all just get a little happier, get along a little better, right? But we're so irrational oh, around food. Oh, there's one food. thing I know this year is humans are insanely irrational. Well, th- that's a whole other <laughs> yeah. topic. We'll save that for another episode. <laughs> but around Crazy. food specifically, like people are nuts. there's so much emotion and irrationality attached to it that like which I didn't realize was as bad as it was until I started, you know, throwing my food online, which I don't recommend to anyone. <laughs> um, but yeah, and that's that's kind of what ended up doing it for my family too was at first they were also irrational. My dad thought I was going to die of like malnutrition. <laughs> and now he is so proud. Like he he now like has made, you know, recipes for my cookbook or more than likely wants me to cook for him. Um, <laughs> well, my mom's too, mostly if like vegan. A, if I had a chef in the family, I'd be like, yeah. yeah. My stepdad is like a, a meat eater through and through. Like he hunts oh. and like butchers <laughs> his own deer and that sort of thing. And and he loves the food that I make. So, I mean, is he ever going to change? No, but he's not going to not eat the food that I make for him. Yeah. But it's good that you guys can also get along. Yeah. Because there's a lot of people, and as I said this earlier, a lot of vegans that are, you know, it's, vegan ride or die and then there's on the other end where you hunt and but if you're uh i think it's hunting responsible or responsible hunting what's the my, my brother-in-law does as well and I yeah where it's humane, like you act, it's hum, humane hunting? i don't humane, i can't remember whatever but it is yeah. where it's like you're actually using what you hunt you're not doing it for sport or trophy hunting whatever but it's the idea that you can get along and see both both perspectives yeah well and, you and can it's just ridiculous you're just so sm- i don't want to say small-minded and that's maybe not the right word but oh, yeah, it's a pretty good word though yeah, yeah. Kind of like testadura, a hard-headed kind of thing. Well, it's also that being that narrow-minded, is, right? That would, be, that would um, be go. I mean, my mom <clears throat> is mostly vegan, and then my stepdad is like a through-and-through meat eater, so he really wanted chicken, and he wanted eggs, and she was sick of... Okay, so I know I brought this up earlier before we were recording, but my parents live off-grid, um, and she was tired of going into town, because they live in the middle of nowhere, and live on solar um buying him because it's already the closest town next to them is very small town so the produce that they get and like just groceries in general it's not not great yeah um and she was like why does all this chicken look gray and so she made a deal with him she was like okay we're gonna get our own chickens that's where we get our eggs that's where you can you have to kill you know you want to eat meat kill it and so that's what they do. And she eats her way and he eats his way, but he has to work for his food and he has deep respect for the chickens. He has to care for the chickens before he slaughters them. And and I mean, I don't believe in killing animals for food, but that's a way better way of doing it than like having that cognitive dissonance of where your food comes from. Yeah, at least you're the one that's handling, you know what's going yeah. into it, you know what you're feeding it, you know what, it's kind of, you know the whole process start to finish from 
From yeah, so birth now to he whatever. only more or less eats the food that he kills himself. So they're really off the grid. Then. Oh yeah, they're real. Yeah. Off I can actually, they only eat their own vegetables. They grow their own garden. Oh, like well, that, I really that's think that's cool. where all so of this cool. came from. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. I think that's really cool. I actually really fascinated with that. I think that's so like really cool to be self sustaining all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I actually just a little side digression on that is that I actually kind of know what that's like, and I remember my first experience with this is that my dad grew up in a small town in Greece. We still go back. Every summer. Nyata, the center of the universe. Nyata, baby. Center of the universe. The birthplace of civilization. Jesus. 500 Lord, people Lord. in this town, but it's like, it's like most happened in town. Anyways, we, uh, <laughs> when we go back as kids and my grandparents are still around, my grandmother had a chicken coop. They would have goats, everything. So they were like, when you live in a village in Europe, like you, you feed, live off your land kind of thing. I remember there was a picture, and I'll never forget this. The first time, we didn't know that they slaughtered the chickens. We just thought they just appeared cooked like one day. So me and my sister are like three and four or something with my dad. And my grandmother, during the photo, just like, and my sister's like, her face looks like she just saw her best friend. Like, it was like, it's now in hindsight watching, it's kind of like funny to laugh at. But it was like, we didn't know that's how you got food back in the day. So many kids have no idea. Yeah. Because you don't have an appreciation. Even now. Yeah. They no just, oh, chicken nuggets? Yeah, they're just, yeah. They're just made. Imagine you should. Actually, that's interesting. Made. Imagine every kid who just eats like all the deep fried chicken nuggets and burgers and everything actually saw an animal have to get like well, plucked Paul, and killed and everything. Paul McCartney has um, a quote and it is, if slaughterhouses had glass windows, the whole world would be vegetarian just because wow. of how terrible the practice uh, is now. Yeah. Um, I mean, when we go to the grocery store, we have the cognitive, going back to the cognitive dissonance is that like what we have for meat now is not, there's nothing natural about it. I get a lot of comments about meat as natural. Okay. Maybe, but not how you're getting it. Yeah. Like the whole factory farming, all that. It's awful. It's terrible. And we're killing trillions of animals every year. And so much of it goes to waste. Is it actually trillions? Yes. For sure. Wow. Yeah. You got to think about how many people you're feeding in the world. How many and so chickens, much how many of eggs. it goes to waste. And that's Trolls what bothers well. me, I think, more than anything else is that like, okay, if you, let's say, for example, indigenous communities, you know, they have, they they hunt and they use all of the animal and they respect the animal and they respect the animal's soul and they have their, their religious reasons around it. And there's a respect that like I understand versus killing something and then not even using it. For example, like if I was to go to a restaurant and I ordered a vegan pizza and you put cheese on that pizza, I would rather take it home, give it to someone else or eat it than let it go bad because then that animal, you know, lost its life for no reason. And that's what bothers me. It's more the the waste the, that bothers yeah. me more than anything else because for what? You died for what? You know what I mean? That's interesting, yeah. Yeah, and that's I why factory farming. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, I mean, factory farming has a whole other set yeah, of issues. Yeah, but thing and everything, yeah. Well, but more that, than that, a lot to do with it. Yeah, but yeah, that, that bothers that me hurts. a lot. It's just that, yeah. like, zero respect for the life that you're eating. Well, isn't in Canada, at least, maybe the, I'm just completely ignorant to the, to the fact, but isn't in Canada, aren't we really good with raising our animals? No. We're bad? Yeah, we're really bad. We're actually honest, so I, bad that we just passed I thought a, we were really good. No, we're pretty bad. That's why we just passed a bill in Canada where if you um, go into a slaughterhouse with like an undercover camera, you will be thrown in jail because the dairy really? industry and beef industry lobbies so much in Canada, they had the pressure wow. to make I don't know that beef, happen. But dairy, I know you see dairy farmers and all that stuff all all over the all yeah over it's I'm we're not better than anybody else wow. you gotta remember something too like no matter what i mean I again i really well, i don't know enough about it but you remember anything that is for profit and is a big conglomerate and a big way of life and feeds a lot of feeds a lot of people a lot of mouths and is a billion trillion dollar industry naturally there's gonna be maybe there is some good farms here maybe but the overall majority like you don't know the small farm into yeah Saskatchewan. it's i mean like, so, it's small farms Fine, that's different. Yeah. But as you I just start to get when money starts to get involved, then it's a, a, a lot. Naturally, naturally, that does happen. But it's, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. And uh, well, if, let me ask you this: If you were a meat eater, where would you buy your meat? If I was a meat eater, um, I would probably have one butcher that I go to, and it would be this someone. Is a, big, a big shout out here. So. Are you going to say someone specifically? No. Oh, I thought you were about to I, don't know, I was like, how would she yeah. know? How would, I mean, that's a massive shout out. Like, <laughs> no, that, no, would no. Be, that would be like me shouting out the, I don't, I don't even know. Like, yeah, I was just like, do you have She would never have eaten the so meat. You, no, no, no. So like, I local. would have one butcher, but I would want the butcher to be the same man or woman who also raised the animal. 
Like for me, if I was to eat meat, I would want it to come from someone that had respect for that animal. I mean, can you have a lot of respect for an animal if you kill it? Fine. That's a whole other conversation. But it for, loved and cared for that animal and did it properly. I yeah, wasn't growing yeah. up in like a tiny little cage with eight yeah, other Yeah, I would never eat factory farm meat. How do you know? Sorry, how do you know if it's factory farm meat? Uh, I would like say all, all metro, all, anything everything you find store. in a grocery store is factory yeah. farmed. Okay. Like if you go to maybe like, what's it called? The butcher shop here on the... Com- oh, the com- healthy com- butcher? Com- there's that. There's Cumbria's. I, I'm just guessing. I don't know them, but I'm saying I would assume a shop like that probably p- selects better cuts. Maybe they go in and, and choose. Like, I mean, I would say it's probably better than what's in the grocery yeah. store, but, but even still, people... it's hard to know for sure. There's a lot of whitewashed meat too. Things like um, like grass-fed and like free-range. Those I was just going to bring that up anything. before you said that. That's what I was wondering. Because you don't see eggs in a shit. farm, you see free-run, omega-3s, uh, uh, organic like there's so many labels watching. honestly I look at them yeah, and I was maybe, like maybe. I don't know the difference my dad actually brings so he there's um, up by their their cottage there's like a farm there it's basically like it's like a small farm they have chickens and they put eggs in a fridge you just drive up you put like five bucks in the thing you take it out of the fridge oh my dad has a bunch of stuff like that too, oh yeah where he lives out in uh, in Quebec in the country okay so it's just like an honor system yeah like, and I'm, I asked my dad I was like, have you ever seen anyone steal anything you're like take they're like no it's, everyone respects it but they're I think they're actual like free run organic they know where they comes from I actually have him bring them down to me. I've never seen bigger, like, yellower eggs. Like, when I cracked one open and I saw it compared to the one I had in the store. So the store with large ones are, like, this big. But you crack the yolk and it's, like, like almost like a yellow. Yeah. This one is massive. And I was like, I like, asked my dad, I was like, are you sure these are not, like, pumped up with anything? Like, no, they're, like, 100%. They're, they're out probably the orange. The yeah, they're orange. Is- they're, yeah. And th- honestly, they're incredible. I don't buy eggs in the store anymore. I tell them when you're coming down, just bring me two Well, two did cartons. you know that you actually don't have to refrigerate eggs? I did not know that. So if you get an egg from a farmer, you don't have to refrigerate it because it has a protective coating around it naturally that helps it from going bad. But the eggs that you buy at the grocery store are radiated and washed so, oh. with chemicals. So that coating is gone. That's why they have to put them in the fridge. That that just gave me a flashback to my <laughs> grandmother with the eggs. I swear now that I think about it, she never had the eggs in the fridge. I actually had a flashback. Oh, is that, that on the weird. counter, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too. Like a little bull. She had like five eggs in the morning. I was always scared to go with the eggs. I was terrified of chickens. I would run in there. <laughs> would like run at you. I was like, oh, fuck this. I'm not I getting I mean, like any other bird, they're uh, terrifying. They're so scary. And will take your eye out. Yeah, they're honestly scary. They're so small, but when they start flapping. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm always scared to get shit on. Anytime like, uh, it's like, good luck, apparently. Uh, I, man, I feel yeah. like that was a guy who kept getting shit on. Just like telling people it's good luck. <laughs> yeah, we just thing. talked about that. Like, yeah, this is the first guy being like, year, "Whatever, yeah. don't laugh at me. It's good luck." Yeah, <laughs> that's what I wonder. Year. A lot of those things that people say are good luck or miscon like those uh, not misconception. Was uh, anyways. I don't know. Forget the word. But yeah, forget I'm going that point. Okay. Uh, I wanted to ask something before because we asked what the first recipe you ever made was. What's your favorite thing to make? Uh, my favorite thing to make or my or, favorite. Like dish. Your favorite dish. Or both. both. Or both, yeah. I mean, I talked about my schnitzel before, but that's probably one of my favorite things to feed people that eat meat just because it's so spot on and everyone. I've never met someone. I mean, maybe they're just being polite. Plan Um, is better, yeah. (laughs) Eating on a podcast sounds kind of odd, though. You could have had dinner here. You you know what? Just have us back to talk about, you know, feminism, and I'll bring you some food. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Fair, fair. fair. Okay. Um... So there's that. But then also, what do we eat a lot at home that I love to make? Lasagna. Lasagna is my favorite food. Oh, I F with, I F with lasagna. I don't know what this is. <laughs> this. <laughs> oh, I mean, bur- okay, so burgers are my, I love burgers so much. But I would say things that you actually have to put an effort into making. Mm-hmm. Lasagna. Well, I saw this on it was page 199. Man. I queued it up, actually. It was the, um, would you say the turkey is the hardest thing you ever made? Most no, difficult? it was time consuming, but not difficult. Okay. Oh, good. That looks the shredded Hogtown jackfruit. I was I was gonna guess that was jackfruit because you made a point earlier about shredded. So that looks good. That's uh, that was one of my I think my one of my first viral videos. No, the, it'll that? autofocus. Jordan can fix it. You can put it in front of the camera. Yeah, that was one of the first videos that really popped off for me. Um, the, this one here. The, yeah, yeah. Just because now it's super Jordan, common, but back then it wasn't. It's fine. Okay. Um, sorry, you said that was one of the first ones you made that really kind of. Yeah, because no one had really ever seen it before. Um, what was it? Sorry, I missed it. The jack. The oh, jack. Oh, the one I was yeah, holding yeah. pork. Yeah, picked a good one. The barbecue pulled pork. I mean, really. I mean, this is subjective, but when you have pulled pork, really, are you just tasting the barbecue sauce? 
for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so it was. I actually had pulled pork kind of recently. I don't. I rarely ever eat it, but I had it recently from like a barbecue place. Not, thing, Vaughn. It's always about the barbecue. It's just sauce, like sauce. Right? It's literally yeah. sauce, and then you also eat it with coleslaw, so you don't even taste the, the meat. Half the times I get it, it's usually at the um, rib fest. Yeah. Yeah, like pulled pork with your ribs and the blooming onion and the. Whole, Funnel cake and the whole nine yards. Yeah, Funnel so it's, cake. it's an easy recipe to fool people with for that reason. Because good barbecue sauce is good barbecue sauce. If you put barbecue sauce on anything, you're going to like it more or less. 100%. Is regular barbecue sauce vegan? Um, A lot of it is, yeah. A lot of it is, okay. Yeah, unless you get into like specialized yeah. versions of it. But yeah, it, I mean, it's just a bunch of condiments more or less. Yeah. <laughs> what about, because gelato is vegan, but ice cream isn't. Right. Correct? Some gelato also isn't vegan. Oh. Yeah. So are you a big gelato person? Or you no, I'm an ice cream, cream person. I don't it? understand. I love gelato. I also love ice cream more than gelato. I don't understand sorbet or sherbet. Neither, neither do yeah. I, actually. I've had it's, it. I've bought uh, it at the store before. Eh. Not often. Well, I think... Well, like lemon... So like lemon Sorry. sorbet, lemon gelato are very similar. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I don't know. I just yeah, keep thinking... Yeah, that. So, yeah. I mean, more <laughs> Gelato is... Like water and ice, and then the the flavoring. Are these? Are you are you sure? Are you fact check. I, I think that's what it is. And then ice creams, your milk based. Right. Product. I mean, you, you can, can get, have you gelato with with dairy and without. Um, but all, all the best flavors have dairy in them. Yeah. That's the problem. Do you have? But, a, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I don't remember. Oh, sorry. That's my. <laughs> I just completely cut you off. I was gonna ask, do you have a favorite ice cream that like a go to? Oh my god! Yes. Okay, okay. I have two. Okay. Oh, I have hit a, us one in it. stick version and one in like normal ice cream version. <laughs> I feel like you really I get just light a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I love ice cream. Okay, so uh, the so delicious um, cashew based ice cream. So okay, when you go vegan ice cream, don't. Don't go with the coconut or the almond milk. It's always too icy. The thing with ice cream is fat content. And cashews, as a nut, has a lot of fat in it. So if you get a cashew-based ice cream, it's going to be the most luscious and fatty and delicious ice cream that you can get. And that's the best. It's so it's called so right delicious? There. Yeah. All, or, uh, I was about to say almond. Um, cashew. Okay. Ca uh, caramel cashew cluster i believe is the best flavor that i like Man, and then I'm in hungry. stick version the magnum dairy free um i don't even know what they're called are they, magnums yeah that, magnums. That's the yeah. are they the double walled ones that are like because magnum has a i, I know my magnums they're they're all this guy gets them at the easy <laughs> we should get them yeah. sponsored with mag no i get them everywhere okay so <laughs> yeah, next time buy a dairy free one i guarantee you you will not be able to tell the difference really the ice cream is some of the like when I first tried that, I was like, okay, yeah, chocolate, whatever, chocolate on the outside. But the ice cream is ridiculous. And it's not overly sweet like a lot of vegan ice cream is because okay. they overcompensate for the fact that it's not fat and delicious with just sugar. And then you have a sugar headache and you're running up and down the yeah, stairs yeah, at three yeah. o'clock in the morning because you're <laughs> still on that sugar high. Um, but this is like super balanced okay. with the creaminess. And I the will sugar. say sugar does not affect me that much because I could eat a bag of candy and fall asleep immediately. But if there's someone that can tell the difference between non-dairy and dairy ice cream, I don't know. It'd be you. But see, you make fun of me. You tell me that I like Hog food. Dogs? I eat. I can eat a lot, but like I'm not like. I feel like you would. Be I'll try. You we'll know what? Find out. I will try. I'll try both. That would be a fun video idea. Oh, there we go. It? Yeah. Mm. Have you ever thought about doing that? Like doing like a? Have you done it for like live taste tests or like I almost have. like a? I did a cheese one a couple of years ago, and this was before like really good vegan cheese was a thing, and I just had. Um, people taste test different types of vegan cheese and get like the real in the moment um, reactions. And it was interesting. I would like to update that now that there's good cheeses. Call us. Uh, You're in. Honestly, We're it's some fat pit content. Oh, I mean, I'll, got a fake so, Instagram account. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll supply free food. <laughs> Man, <laughs> free food. Uh, so we've got a couple years, a year ago, actually, I made this uh, a parody account for George. So I literally a year ago, almost exactly. Yeah. Did it when we were in Florida. We so in, uh, basically, yeah, it was like New Year's last year. Okay. So we were there and George, George snacks a lot. Like Big a snacker. lot. That's been the hardest, not the hardest thing lately, but like, yeah. Uh, so he's like a notorious snacker all times. Do you have day. like a favorite snack? Of course. Oh, favorite snack. That's really tough. Like you have to take one snack mm -hmm. on a desert island. Uh, wine gums. Oh, my I like God. the. Oh, see, thank <laughs> you. He said, I say that he's like you're I, old. I, I, I was like, what do you mean? The other day, I was like, that's They're an good. old person candy. They're really good. Really though. good. My mom used we to eat get a them. lot of candy as well. Okay, good. So actually, a friend of ours. But isn't gelatin? 
A uh, animal byproduct? Yes, I have to get the gelatin free candy. Oh, okay. interesting. I didn't know. Like oh. Swedish berries, which is gelatin very, free. Very, very. Are they? New real fruit, gelatin free. A new real fruit? Like wow. the, 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 those are great. Yeah. Those are yeah. good. Most Maynard's candy doesn't have gelatin in it. Wow. Really? Interesting. Yeah. Wow. But the knockoff brands that they sell at Walmart. This is terrible. Whatever, you shouldn't they... tell me this. I would have been in my head like, I got to go vegan to be healthy. Can't eat candy. Now somebody, I'm going to go vegan. I still eat candy. Somebody needs to come up with a vegan version of the Coke bottle gummies because I haven't had that since I was a child. You? I, I, yeah. Like, <laughs> would it be hard? Is it, I don't know. Would it be hard to make? Have you tried making candy or chocolate? Mainly. Okay. So I don't like to try very hard when it comes to most <laughs> things. <laughs> Respect. Honestly, like I'm respect. really lazy, and if I'm not good at it, Cooked I don't want to do it. Eat an eight-hour vegan turkey. <laughs> Says I'm lazy. Listen, <laughs> one, you gotta work one If day. I'm not good at it, I don't want to do it. Fair and I haven't tackled candy yet, but maybe that's something I have to do next. I just haven't done it because it's it is hard. And yeah. working with sugar, I'm a very clumsy person, and working with sugar is very dangerous. Very meticulous, like spilling stuff. And yeah, you can give burn, yourself like crazy burns. Burn yourself they pretty call bad, yeah. like sugaring or uh candy sugar they call it like napalm in the kitchen really yeah really it's it on like your skin it's just like it's just sears well, it. and and then it hardens <sighs> then it's stuck then to your yeah, skin yeah. i ain't forever. superimposing no photos of that i have a weak stomach out yeah <laughs> no, don't google no. that <laughs> don't google that um that's interesting though i didn't know that uh candy is vegan well, i feel a lot better but well, well, that makes it healthy. i'm very impressed with myself i knew this gelatin thing yeah you're smart rick that was a good one <laughs> yeah. i don't know where i got that from either it's crazy <laughs> Look at you go. You're this one, one step closer random to fact. He's the smartest guy in the world. Put me on who wants to be a millionaire. I don't know. Maybe Jeopardy. No big deal. Veganism for a hundred thousand? No problem. Oh, maybe you heard it in passing somewhere. People have random crazy. facts. <laughs> Apparently. Your brother Wait, if you had one snack on a desert island, did we talk about this? No. Hmm. One snack on a desert island. Do you know your do you guys know yours back there? I know hers. What do you think it is? Oh, oh yeah those that's are a good, good. their new commercials are so good too yeah. it's just like the red and blue triangles mm -hmm. like, i always struggle between sweet and salty because i love them both equally okay oh, uh, oreos, oreos? yeah it's a classic but the white oreos like the ones that are covered no wait what do you mean the white? oh white, the golden oreos yeah i've had them before i wasn't crazy about them no do you, oh, know, do you know what i had recently <laughs> that blast was a, a good blast from the past dunkaroos what wow <laughs> yeah. yeah that was a good one i had those the other day saw you it at a convenience store it's just like one it was a dollar fifty or two you got bucks. it of course i bought it's it just, you call me fat was what's it funny what was is that you had Fair. what's funny is we can make dunkaroos at home it's just icing and cookies yeah. so let's let's talk i'm <laughs> when are we coming Rick's over for dinner for free food yeah, I'm, 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 Rick will eat anything anywhere anytime. yeah i my i'm you probably eat more than i do pro oh for sure i did so I'm but a I, big like seafood, eat food kind of guy. Like I see oh, it. I thought I you were it. gonna say seafood. No, no. <laughs> you, you honestly fooled me there. I was no, like, no, you know, people like I'm on that. that seafood diet. I see food, I eat food. Like that's that's you. That, that's my. You diet. came up with that joke. No, I I <laughs> wish I did because that's a solid dad joke. If there is one, <laughs> that's a great dad joke. No, but I, actually, me and my mom. So I recently hit the 200 club. And in, in, on weight, and I've never, <laughs> I've never hit it before. So we started a nice kind of welcome to the party. Yeah, we started a nice little routine um, where she's me and her, mostly her, actually ninety five percent her. She cooked basically our entire meals for the week on Sunday, and then re upped us on on Wednesday. We bought the Tupperware, so it's, everything's pre packaged. I bring it to the office, me, my dad, and my brother, because my dad's trying to drop a couple lbs as well. So if if it's packaged nicely in front of me, and it's like, hey, this is your meal for the day. Here's your snacks. This is breakfast. That's lunch. You know, these nuts are the pre-dinner snack. Then your tangerines are the post-lunch snack. Pre-dinner dinner. Yeah, I, I'm good. I will. I will. I, I can be on a sick most diet. People the are. Problem like is that. when I get to the office and then someone brings in pizza and I'm like, oh well, there's an extra slice. Can't let it go to waste. Remember, waste is bad. <laughs> yeah, waste is bad. All right, guess I'll eat that pizza slice too. And that's how I hit the 200 club. Just it's, like it's funny we talk about how people are irrational, but it's also funny how people rationalize things that they mm -hmm. do. Big, Especially food. Yeah, yeah. My, yeah, yeah. my See, dad like, can't let it go away, so I gotta my eat dad it. Dad is notorious. <laughs> like, if you like, we're like, Dad, we can box it and take it. My dad like, no, but it doesn't taste the same. And I'm like, that is a hundred percent true, but. We can't eat anymore. Except for pizza. I like pizza. Yeah, Next like, day pizza yeah. is, is so the real, better pizza. Yeah. We'll go to the restaurant and they'll be like, my family used to be four people. My dad, my brother. Now we have my brother's fiance, Virgie. Shout out, Virgie. Um, we, so now we're five. <laughs> Shout out, Virgie. That's we'll, fast. Was, well, you know, I just want to make sure I get this in. Get this <laughs> so we're five people now. We'll go to the restaurant. We each order our own main. 
We'll order, you know, a pizza. We'll get a pizza to split in the table. So that's six mains and four appetizers. And I'm like, how are we going to finish this? Like a main You're is not. one person plus you split an appy, maybe two or three people. Okay, well, we got the pizza to split. So that's everyone's got a slice there. Then there's an extra slice. Either me or Frank are taking that. That's a no-brainer. You but really then, think, sorry, could you really think a lot about, like, you're very calculated with your food. Oh, man. Am I the only one noticing this? Like, <laughs> I've never thought about how, I don't ever could tell you how many appetizers I order standard when I go to a restaurant. Oh, we always, sorry to cut you off. The problem is we that, order like, so many. And I'm like, Dad, we're not going to finish. He's like, it's fine. It's fine. And it's like, then I'm, again, I see it. I eat it. And it's like, I can't let it go to waste. Oh, the sauce isn't going to taste as good tomorrow when I put it in the microwave. So I got to finish that because that's not going to taste as good. All right, you know what? I'm going to leave my piece of chicken, but I'm just going to finish everything else. Or, you know, French fries. French fries never taste the same the next day. Got to eat everybody's French fries. Okay, so I'm going to suggest an air fryer for you. No, How are like those? Amazing. Elaine, the, are you best, listening? the best reheated French fries or pizza really? ever. Yeah, because you just throw it in and it, it's, it like refries it. What's it for cooking though? Is it good for cooking? Yes. Yeah. I like, saw someone okay. use it recently and I was really So fascinated. when I, before I was in a relationship, I never saw the point of turning my oven on for just me. It seems like a waste and a lot of time yep. and preheating and no. all of that shit, right? So I got no. an air fryer and then I could just make like roasted, I don't know, cauliflower or broccoli in like five minutes in the air fryer because it actually takes less time too. Roasted cauliflower is actually great. It's my delicious with like tahini sauce. Oh my god! Yeah, really. Mm -hmm. Actually, I've had that ex almost that exact thing before. Roasted cauliflower with tahini. I think it was that. And probably pomegranates. Yeah. Who was the <laughs> Sacco? I think. Um, there's it's the sorry. one, the Mediterranean mm -hmm. vegan one that was open and shut down on Portland Street. Oh my god. Meze? No, no Meze. Um, any, I'm not gonna remember. Can, look, can you look at it? <clears> I've heard it's, um, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. 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 Across yeah. from Ruby. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh. So, Sook. 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 Yeah. Sook. S O U K. Sook. It means yeah. um, market. In yeah, that's where, yeah, yeah. That, so that, I think that's where I had that exact, sim or something similar. Yeah, it's very common in Middle Eastern. I'm cuisine. way too hungry right now. I like, just Rick, talking about food. Rick, <laughs> Rick is calculating his head how many apps he's going to make at home and how many slices of pizza he's going to have. No, no, like, I got a salad. You're very at home. meticulous about your food, eh? I, have I just, at home food, before. like, I'll just, I'm hungry. I just eat. I'm like, okay, that's I need a little That's how I look at food. I'm hungry. I eat. When I started dating him, I had to think about like more so like portions and cooking more because he eats like six times a day. But before then, like I really Looks didn't. Looks great for eating six times a day. I'm like, I'm hungry. What's in the fridge? I eat it. Like I've never been someone to like calorie count or anything like that. I just don't see the pleasure. I don't want to take pleasure away from eating. That's yeah. like eating for me is an activity. Like it's watching TV you is or hanging out with a friend. Yeah. Like I enjoy eating. So now I'm, I'm I'm on this kind of journey to 180, trying to lose 20 pounds. And everyone's asking me, well, what's your macros? What's your mic? Your other micros? Or is it just macros? macros. macros. So everyone's asking me, what's your macros? How many calories are you doing today? I'm like, I don't do any of that. Cause I just, it bothers me. Like, I don't want to put it into my phone. Okay. I had, you know, one chicken breast. Oh, that was a big chicken breast. That's eight ounces, not six ounces. They just, I don't enjoy it. I think it can also really trigger like eating disorders for people. Like when you are so into what you're eating, like, Think of all the brain power you need to do all that. Like, I, I, I think we spend so much time already thinking about food. Like, I, back in the day when I was a little less educated than I am now, I did a 21-day juice cleanse. Don't do a juice cleanse ever. <laughs> They're terrible for you. Um, and the amount of hours and brain power I got back from not having to worry about what I have had to eat. Like, I ran out of things to do, and I'm one of those people that always has something to do. Yeah. Like I felt more <laughs> relaxed because I didn't have to think about food. Like think, and then what? You also want to track it? That's crazy to me. Yeah. Same. If you don't enjoy it, you're less likely to stick with it. Yeah. I don't even enjoy it. Like I so I, I said I, for anyone who does like the, the the fitness competitions, like health, and that's kind of like their lifestyle. They enjoy that. That's different. good on you. Like that's if yeah. it's your job, you're creating that's your passion. Different. Yeah. But like for me, I I've done it before. I I actually did, said this thing like make a, all the jokes you want, but I said I, like last year I'm like I'm never gonna use the term diet again because i'm like i want to eat what i want to eat a lifestyle eat, yeah i want to eat healthy like i'm not doing vegetarian to go on a diet i just want to try to see my body how it adapts to it i did a 24-hour fast in december just for the sake of it see how my body yeah. reacts to it the one thing i do like is i do intermittent fasting similar to what rick does because then i can i don't feel like it's bloated i know if I, I can eat a little bit more and i don't have to count my calories and all that stuff i don't feel guilty but i also want to, be able to enjoy it like you you know you have such a short 
time on this earth like what's the point of yeah i mean i intermittent fast intermittent fast yeah. yeah intermittent fast as well but it's not it just for me naturally that's how i enjoy eating like i'm not hungry until noon yeah, yeah same yeah so it's not for any other reason other than like eating first thing in the morning makes me want to hurl yeah like, i'm not like <laughs> i'm not hungry yeah i'm not hungry i also don't feel as focused like i'd rather just have a black coffee or a tea or something and get yeah. to work same. if i eat in the morning i'm actually hungrier faster like by midday, if I eat breakfast at not eight, I'm less seven, productive if I eat in the morning. Yeah, yeah. So that's why, to your point, though, yeah, it's like I don't. I, it's people have this crazy fascination. I, I never really thought about it that way, but yeah, people do get very fascination fast. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Uh, <laughs> dad jokes. No, I was for just days. gonna say that. That's <laughs> all that's in there, by the way. <laughs> you know, a bunch of dad jokes. Yeah. Well, okay, since you brought it up, unless you were you no, no, no. Was, well, let's talk about the book. I'm. When did it come out? 2018. 2018. What so I guess it was the next step. I guess you'd started YouTubing already. The yeah. blog was going, publishing the next book. How'd you go about doing I it? I actually had I was approached by a lot of different publishers to publish a oh, book. That's exciting. And I never saw the point in it because all my recipes are online. Why would people pay for a book? Blah 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 blah. Um, and if I was going to do a book, I wanted complete control over the book and I wanted to do it the exact way that I wanted so I wanted a photo for every single recipe um I wanted to do all the styling myself all of that I'm a bit of a control freak um so sure. then I met with uh, my publisher Robert Rose and they pretty much gave me everything that I asked for um and the way that they pushed it not even pushed it but described it is that it's a it's a it's another marketing tool and it gives you clout so people are more likely to take you seriously as a home chef if you have something like a book. Yeah, so it just made sense. Um, but this book was written in less than a year. Um, it was a timeline that my publisher has never done before and now say we'll never do again. I don't Why think do you say that? Because it was just crazy. <laughs> just we wild. went from con like concept to published in eight months. That's for a book. Most cookbooks, you have two years to write your cookbook. Okay. So it was crazy. But did you take a lot of the recipes from the blog? No. So only 10% of the recipes in that book are from my blog. Wow. Because then why would you buy a cookbook, right? Makes sense. And there's 133, I think I saw. 138. 138, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, sorry, I apologize for stepping out of that one. I drink way too much water lately and I... Got to step, step oh, out I, that one, I but, drink a gallon but, of water now. It's it's a lifestyle to go to the bathroom. Yeah, like I every <laughs> every hour I'm running out. But sorry, I did catch it at the end. So, um, you only ten percent of recipes you had, and you came up with the rest of them. How did you? How long was that? Like that process? I heard you said eight months, but was that a lot? Very time consuming coming up with new stuff, or did you kind of um, know what you wanted to put? Luckily, before even the contract is written between you and a publisher, you have to have your table of contents done. So I had to come up with the recipes that I wanted to make. Obviously, if you can't make a recipe happen, let's say there's just no way to veganize, I don't know, X, Y, or Z, you can drop that and replace it with something else. But for the most part, I had all the recipes I had to veganize. Then I wrote, tested, and wrote the creative in three months. Wow. Oh, Jeez. I, wanna, I don't want to switch topics, but I don't want to forget this question. Is there one food you can't veganize? Steak. That you oh, okay. Fair. Yeah, but it's not steak. So that's the, one, that's the one thing if someone's like, steak's my number one food, I can't give it up. You can't. There's no. There's just, I don't think you could ever get close enough to a steak. Like you can get close enough to chicken. You can sausage. Get sausage, all of that. Um, I don't know that you would get the same satisfaction from a vegan steak. Oh, that was different though, because it's roast beef, not steak. Yeah, but how was that? So, so they in when I went to Tel Aviv. Okay, Tel Aviv has some of the best vegan food in the world. Really? Yeah, there's I a place that. called um, Four One Six. Nothing to do with Toronto. It's <laughs> just like the fourth. The address is it's the Sixteenth Street, but the fourth business. So it's four. Okay, Four One Six. Um, and there are these two guys who I think one of them was a chef before, um, but they grew up. They were raised vegan. And um, and they went to New York to do hip hop or something. And anyway, they just love food and they ended up in Tel Aviv because they're from there with this crazy, awesome vegan restaurant where like I had a roast beef sandwich that I know I haven't had beef in a really long time. 
But it was beef. I mean, you've had beef more recently, Louis. Pay attention. <laughs> it was beef. Pay attention to me. <laughs> Pay attention I'm here, to me. Hello. God. I didn't have that. Oh, you didn't have it? The roast beef? No, yes, you did. did yeah, I made you get it. <laughs> I forced you to eat it. It had remember? like the fat and Hello, everything. You, they, you remembered it. He brought it up and he doesn't remember if you had it. <laughs> yes. You. <laughs> anyway, the point the is, on. they managed to make, so it was made with seitan, the same thing that I made the turkey out of, but it was um, like a beef version of it. But they even managed to put fat in it. So when you were wow. eating biting it, biting it, it, it was like juicy and fatty. It was delicious. But in steak, yes. Yes, I do remember. Yeah. But, <laughs> so that's different because it's in pieces. But a steak? The impossible. I mean, I'm not going to say but, impossible. Yeah. Because it's the Impossible Burger, and maybe one day. Maybe I mean they're coming up with a bacon. Apparently, I'm very excited about that. Have you? Have you I'm assuming you've tried the Impossible Burger. Oh yeah. How? It's um. Actually, I think I've, oh, yeah. it's the closest to beef, but I mean he. So we get we do every Friday we do burgers. It's kind of like a tradition nice. now, um, and we usually get the Beyond Meat Burger. But oh, so today was Burger Day. Yeah, but we knew we were going to be here, so we had it last night. Uh, okay. uh, we're very committed to the burger. I don't know if you can tell. Yeah, they can't skip it. It's burger and movie night. Right, so you next can't Friday, skip I'm it. coming over. Thanks. Perfect. Yeah. I know you guys live somewhere in the East End, I think. I'll be there. Yeah. Can't give it we a, have can't a big say house. Here. Come on over anytime. Yeah. We'll feed you. Um, but a couple of weeks ago, when we first got the Impossible Burger in Ontario, I got it for him. And you actually didn't like it because it didn't like you like the flavor of the Beyond Meat more, whereas the Impossible Burger was more like a burger unflavored. Oh. Okay, sorry. Yes, so I actually the be, sorry I mixed them up there. The Beyond Meat Burger, I think I remember reading an uh, an article maybe about this or seeing something about it. They're the first one that really came up with the way to like add like the, the liquids into the burger where it's like you know when you grill a burger that's like the blood naturally comes. So out. that's the Impossible Burger. Oh no! Oh sorry, the other way around then. And yeah. it's, so it's not the Impossible is not as. Yeah, it bleeds. What's the one that all the celebrities? That's like the beat. It's almost like a. I can't remember what it is, but uh, the, I think that's impossible. Impossible is all the. Yeah, like, I think Mark Wahlberg and some of those guys. I, that I'm not sure. Yeah, and it changes color the same way that oh. beef does, which is crazy. I the smell of it was so meaty. I had to open really the door, like next to my kitchen, and just sorry, for you, an airflow. You prefer the Beyond Meat Burger? Um, or? I think it's circum substantial to what okay. you're trying to do but oh, okay. louis preferred the beyond just because it's flavored it it has a f more of a flavor it's like burger yeah just, you have yeah. to season it i think really plain like yeah 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 imagine okay. like eating a burger that was unseasoned okay but like not exactly yeah it's, it's not it's the a same. little bit different i might try yeah yeah it's not the same I've had it in things yeah, yeah, yeah. like lasagna and other dishes, um, and it's really good. Some it's of the other just, flavor takes over too, though, right? Yeah, exactly. But I have seen them do um, like a beef tartare in New York in high-end restaurants. They use it to make beef heart, like a vegan beef tartare. Or veg I guess, no, it would be vegetarian because they still have the egg. But um, wow. a vegetarian beef tartare, which apparently is unreal interesting i'll be honest it's one of my favorite things tartar yeah, i love it oh i want to just kind of finish up a couple more questions <laughs> on the book what was the thing you learned the most from writing this book um what that did sentence I, makes sense what did i learn like, most what did you learn most from writing that book yeah i said it i'm like wait a second i sound weird saying that but <laughs> i guess with a crazy fact and i was questioning how he speaks <laughs> You, you would have guessed we've been doing this for 89 episodes, 90 episodes, whatever. Holy oh, God. wow. Almost 100. Oh, we're almost there. there. So excited. Um, I guess I learned the my ability to to work because the timeline was so condensed. I didn't. I was working like 18, 20 hour days sometimes. There was no sleep for me and I definitely learned how hard I can work. But then I really burnt out and that wasn't great. Um, but in terms of food... Um, I guess I fell in love with styling again, like food styling and like food's great and I love cooking, but you can be creative in the kitchen, which is why I love cooking, but you can be really creative with like plating and mm -hmm. styling, you know, the perfect shot and that sort of thing. So did you take your own pictures as well? No. Oh, oh my God. No, no, there would no. <laughs> but you did but you did all of the setup for it basically. I did all the styling, so I picked every every single like spoon plate in that book was picked by every me. Every drop of sauce. Um I had an assistant, a prop styling assistant who helped me set things up, but everything was picked by me. 
which was really fun, you know, yeah. to go to prop house and like kind of imagine like the the perfect plating setup that you would want at like some imaginary dinner. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> that actually leads to my question I was going to ask is that what was the was there an overarching theme you wanted to go with? Was there kind of a some kind of mood board, if you will, that you had in your head that you said, I want to. For Try. the styling? For, for the or styling, for the, like for the shots, the book overall, and then kind of like the, the imagery. Well, the book is called Carnivore Approved. So, well, it's the Edgy Veg Carnivore Approved. So it's very meaty, traditional um, comfort food meals that you don't really think that you could veganize. So it's a lot of pastas and um, like sandwiches, that sort of thing. So pretty much anything that you can think of that would be really cheesy or meaty, it's probably in there. Sweet. Um, but in terms of photos, my kind of brand of photos is very bright, kind of eccentric, um, kind of moody sometimes, really oh, vibrant wow. colors. So what you'll get in my book that you won't, or even my blog that you won't get from a lot of other um, food blogs is that you'll get a really vibrant picture. Whereas, you know that like Pinterest whitewash yeah. that every other food blogger yeah. has? I don't do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I actually flipped the one that this one really, I might have to make this. I'm a big ramen fan. Oh Normal my Fuka God. Style ramen. All right, I'm yeah. coming over to your house for that day. <laughs> it's, Rick is it's all, like all over these free meal. dinners now. Well, okay. So in, in this book, oh, wow. I tried to go as traditional as possible. So I looked at the traditional version of making ramen and the history of making ramen and made a vegan version of it. So if it's in that book, it's the original version of how to do it, just veganized. So wow. with the pho as well, it's, you know, roasting, you know, the um, the spices and the onions in the oven before doing anything. So it, a lot of research went in, into it. I There's a that. lot of Middle Eastern recipes as well, and it's the traditional way of making it, just happens to be vegan. Wow. So there are some super easy recipes in there too, but some of them are, you know, goes back Kimchi to their, fry, wow. the original roots of how to do it. What Let me, your, oh, sorry, I want to ask, kimchi fries, can you make these in an air fryer? Yeah. Probably? Yes. Wow. What's That'd your, be a nice your favorite, uh, your favorite recipe from the book? Hey, I got this shirt. <laughs> I literally, have, I used to have that shirt. You bought it for me. You bought it for like my birthday. Cup. No, no, no. Yeah, 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 I think so. <laughs> I think you guys are even my birthday one year or something. You bought me a, like a beach shirt. That what the? F Anyways, um, sorry. Favorite recipe from the book? Oh, my butter chicken. Butter chicken? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I I'm came up with that recipe. You know, Lily Singh, the YouTuber. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I went to back in the day when we, Toronto had like a YouTube space, and we all got together for events and whatever. Wait, there was a YouTube space in Toronto. Yeah, there was. I did not know that. Yeah, for a couple of years. Um, we're not big enough yet, George. We had a big YouTube event, and they were giving out people's um, diamond, um, oh, the what are they called? The plaques play or button yeah. or whatever. Yes. And she was there, and I was one of the people like showing off my craft. So <laughs> I made cool. butter chicken, and she had some, and she was like, oh, my God, it doesn't taste like a white girl made it. And I was like... <laughs> That's going in my book. <laughs> Heck yeah. So I'm very proud of that recipe. Did you call it? It doesn't taste like a white girl made of butter chicken. No, I really tried to, and oh. my publisher said that it, we would get in trouble. But that would have been edgy. Would get offended. That would have been yeah, edgy. I know. Been... But you know, you gotta be really no, careful these days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, we made a, a turkey, and people went absolutely nuts. Oh, that's so. right. I pulled that up before. I think this is a good point, but we can even. Uh, this is kind of a lot. This is the. This I think this will be the. Wants to look at the com. I think I saw him doing this. I think he was looking at the comment section. It's yeah. pretty bad. So first off, love the caption. Thank you. If there's no meat, it's not a turkey. But the with no the capital, uh, capital yeah. case, no meat, no <laughs> turkey. Yeah. <laughs> Here, let's find some good ones. Um, because the best is you chirp back. Oh my god! You yes. go back. You engage it's your people. So much fun. Do you know how hear, stupid most people are? Stupid. People are. No, honestly, the honestly, the only thing I've realized as like, a human is that we like a lot of people. Like we just, yeah. Yeah, stupid. the amount of people that say the same like really lame vegan joke or like have the same comment, you're like, really? Like you're not going to scroll even a little bit to see if that got answered. The most common one I get is, um, why do vegans? If you hate meat so much, why do vegans constantly make food that looks like meat? Which is like such a stupid thing to ask because I'm not vegan because I hate meat. I don't hate delicious flavors. 
I hate the animal cruelty and factory farming. I still like the flavors. So just because I'm vegan doesn't mean I can never eat anything that looks like a burger again. It's such a yeah, stupid yeah, yeah, way yeah. to think about things. Just people that don't understand. So go yeah, ahead. here's one. I wouldn't give this shit to my dog. Your response. I didn't offer it to you or your dog. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm kind of an asshole. And the that is good. Every, every, that everybody's is on funny. the side too. Like people, that's a good one. Yeah, I'm kind of. I like to be the internet troll that people so you like embrace to be it, to You me. like when it kind of gets you. Yeah. Oh my bit, god, yeah. yeah, it's my favorite. It's and awesome. a lot of people are like, "You're so rude in the comment section," yeah. and I'm like. It's the one actually, Why honestly, not? I, I actually like when people. I think it's good. Like, you know, you can really get in the weeds and like, right. and it gets really crazy. But I really think it's good when people like embrace it because you you see that sometimes, right? Like some people when they say they get a bit of, you know, they get attention, they get the fame a little bit. They'll just post and they kind of leave it. Right. I think it's funny when people can do it and they do it like in a witty, almost like witty, yeah. condescending, a little bit, kind of like I backhanded. I definitely always respond with an element of humor, but also that like little sting <laughs> that most women can do, like just when they insult you, like it, like, it, it, it hurts small. you for the rest of your life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you think you're a grown man getting married. You remember that time you got made fun of on, on social media? So yeah. like a little bit of that, but then overlaid with humor yeah that's Rick's what I got like one lined up here bro my parrot would throw up eating this yeah most likely it isn't bird food you okay <laughs> and another one looks like toilet paper overlaid across something just pulled from the sewer oh sweetie don't talk about yourself that way I'm sure you aren't that bad <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh, I like to be the troll ones. it's fun that's so money. funny it gets people engaged too like, yeah the algorithm picks all that back and forth up too, well and sure. negative what people don't understand is that negative engagement is still engagement. The algorithm is still going to pick that up. You're doing me nothing but favors. Yeah. Honestly, I, I, I have, so my good. gut tells me that people getting angry is probably beneficial. There's that saying like not – it. It's the saying I guess in the news back then like if it bleeds, it leads. Like if it's kind of bad, it's kind of the thing. Like people like to get a little bit – triggered so to speak and like you know when it's good to be like oh this is great this is great but you're not going to get the person saying something like long-winded trying to take a shot at you and then it you know creates that kind of platform to create some humor and i and i mean let's i'll also say this i'm not always an asshole in my comment section <laughs> no, like you sometimes are, yeah, I, I, I definitely educate people um and i really try to kind of make them understand but that is if they genuinely are asking this question because they want to learn something if they're Not asking the did. question because they're being a troll it's a different story but if back. you genuinely ask a question and after i respond your response isn't like f you and go die bitch then <laughs> and instead it's like oh <laughs> thank you for talking to me. people yeah. talk to me I, that I way can, it's yeah, upsetting um but if it's like oh okay i didn't understand thanks like i'll keep having that conversation with that person well and it seems like you are pretty level-headed in that sense too because even when we asked you earlier like your stepdad's a meat eater your mom isn't like, yeah the fact that you know you're okay with that they're okay the fact that you know louis wasn't vegan prior to this you guys obviously well and that was his decision yeah that mm. had it's nothing not to do with me no yeah. that's why it's good that you're you're not just again like i said one of those stereotypical vegan ride the tribe, the tribe pack mentality kind of yeah. thing yeah so yeah. it's good that just you can see it. both sides yeah just try just it. try it that is just great <laughs> lead, what you say? lead with a spoon lead with, lead with, lead a, with a fork lead, lead with a fork lead with a fork we yeah. got the 24 minute mark. I mean, I, that, that's, that's good. I, I, I like that, but I do part. really like that that approach to take because a lot of people, uh, you know, you can get combative and emotional food, like we said at the beginning. And I think it's really good to just be more like the education and say, you know, it's not all bad. It's not, it, you know, try something new, step by step. Yeah, and honestly, zone. I mean, this is the way that the world is going. The world maybe will never give up meat, but we're definitely going in a more reduced meat. Yeah place especially with you know the climate change and all of that so i mean hop on board yeah. why not Love have it. fun with it Love i would it. agree you know what if i let's ask before we ask our last question that's one more question if you could tell a meat eater to make one recipe from your book like for the first one an Ooh, easy one. one an easy just one. A, something if they're watching this tomorrow jack fruit no, pulled this pork going up. this is going up jack next week pulled pork jack fruit pulled pork the one i pulled <laughs> <laughs> pork Pulled, yeah, pulled. Pork. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> six year old men are dying in their chairs right now. <laughs> Candace, exactly. this has honestly been really fun. Been a blast. I Thanks for joining. Time. And this, the the roles are reversed. We got, got the. <laughs> Next time you, have you know to what? Get I was going to bring this up too. Your painting sits above above my bathtub. I did hung it. I've never hung a canvas in my life. I didn't break it or anything. I did. I was very proud of myself. The, the I see it every day when I go. I go into the wash and brush my teeth and I look at it. Honestly, maybe, maybe it's very it's, provocative. It's, it's the first it's thing you see when you have your morning poop. Yeah, yeah. honestly. And, uh, no, I, I really. I, I, 
Yeah, I really like it. I and no, uh, in a couple months, the we'll vase, actually, if we were still we'll, recording we'll, in the old yeah. studio, the vase sits right behind the, on the bookshelf now. So, yeah, nice. yeah appreciate it. But Candice, thanks for coming on. It's again been a blast. Uh, you know the two questions we ask. I forgot them. Perfect. <laughs> uh, the first. <laughs> That's a good reaction. <laughs> Perfect. No, sorry, you Boom. know it's funny because Rick always says his line. He'll always ask. They'll say no, and he'll be like, "You don't watch till the end." That was a really quick response. I didn't expect you to say that. You didn't need to watch it. You lived it. The end of the episode. <laughs> That's <laughs> funny, Rick. You know, you're funny, man. Uh, per- my my joke yesterday was funny too. That was oh, a good I remember one. your joke, the three minute one. Oh, that, that was. was funny. I had a couple. If you listen to today's episode, it was a really funny All one. Right. Uh, but anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a giggly mood. Should we tell? Should we repeat the joke you said? No, no, that's no, funny. And plus, we need the downloads. Hello, come on, gotta, <laughs> get off. Um, you gotta listen to a whole. Okay, fair okay, okay, but fair, now fair, you fair. have to say the episode number so they can go yeah, back and find number it. Number eighty-eight with Mike Shorman, the unbalanced paddle boarder. It's, Don't miss out. It's around the middle part of it, but just watch the whole episode, anyways. <laughs> uh, if there was a movie about your life, okay, who would you want to play you? Could Jennifer any, Lawrence. Wow, I didn't even say it could be anyone from any point in time. Wow. Like, like based on her personality, she doesn't look like me, but yeah, on her personality. personality. Jennifer think? Lawrence? No, she's too old now. Ah, uh, she's. It could be anyone from who's, any point in time, though. Who's uh, that? Wait, who's that? Catherine O'Hara. Moira. Moira Rose. The the mom from Shit's Creek. Yeah. Yeah. Homo, okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's a good one. No, yeah, but Jennifer I, Lawrence is sick too. Yeah, right? I, I think Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't have to look at you. It's what yeah. yeah. Who's the vibe? Who's vibe? Who's yeah. the important thing, right? Yeah, I want to be her friend so bad. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she does. See, she's been some she great movies so too. Cool. She's been some great movies. I, I do. Yeah, she's an un- unbelievable really actress. Um, Wait, favorite Jennifer Lawrence movie? What's the one with the seventies? American La- Hustle. American Hustle. Yeah. La La Land. The, the, the La La the, Land with Ryan Gosling. There's American yeah. Hustle. <laughs> that wasn't Jennifer. No, Lawrence. there. No, she yeah, plays like no. the nut. No. So yeah, like, La La Land was Jennifer Lawrence. No, no, that's Emma Stone. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, you how know did I the mix one? Them up? Yeah. It's based in the seventies. Sorry. Joy. No, I think it's. Is it not American Hustle? I think American Hustle. Yeah, but, um, Amy Adams. but she. No, Jennifer but Lawrence Jennifer Lawrence plays the oh, the right. wife. Yeah. yeah. She's crazy. She did the show I about, love it. <laughs> she did the movie about uh, the girl who like popularized the shopping channel. Joy. To, Joy. Was Is that, that good? Joy? That's a good movie. Yeah. Oh, Silver Linings Playbook is really oh, good too. Oh yeah. Her like in terms of like chemistry. mental, her portrayal of that mental illness was really good. I've never seen it. I gotta watch that. It's you really good. It's no, it's it's on my list on Netflix. Oh, I've never watched it. It's not it. a feel good movie, tonight. but it's one that you should but, yeah, watch. It's okay. a phenomenal. Movie. Maybe I'll do maybe I'll do vegan burgers and I'll I'll toss it on. Movie yes, I'll come do over. it Friday night. Rich is looking for a damn free meal. You know what? I'll do burgers one night. Why whenever I prop you, grab my hand. I was you've done it because you're pal. Is that a thing? <laughs> that's a thing yeah, ball and chain that's what you call it when someone if anyone believes you if you made it this far and you would think that ball and chain is a thing you can comment ball on chain. this because I don't never heard that in my life I, every time I go problem he does that and squeezes my hand I think I broke I my just last time to hold your I do hand. it to my dad all the time just so I'm like dad what's up okay. and my dad will randomly just put his fist out like this so I'm like what's up Padre <laughs> I got the last Wrap question up, oh, Jesus Rick you're <laughs> killing me today um I'm oh, making everybody laugh. If today. you uh, a good day. if you could give one piece of advice to your younger self, what would it be? Stop caring so much what other people think. That is really good. Advice. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, that would yeah. be it. I spent a lot of my twenties just changing myself, depending on who I was hanging out with, and got nowhere. Yeah. And then when I started to be myself, here I am. Yay. You have to be authentic. It sounds really corny, but like it's, it's true. Very true. <laughs> it's hundred percent true. It's like the corniest piece of advice. But no, but it's actually yeah. probably some of the best advice. Right? Ever, especially like telling your younger self. Like I mean, that was the same way. When you're young, you don't realize you're gonna make everybody happy yeah. except yourself. You're constantly adjusting. Yeah, you're, you're so easily influenced by others. Yeah. Yes. It's, yeah. It's great I advice. Agree. Honestly, I think it's really good advice. Yeah, um, Candice, if people want to find out more about you. Everything you're doing, where should they go? How do they find you? Uh, the easiest way is probably the edgyveg.com or on Instagram, which is at edgyveg. Exactly how it sounds. Yeah, Still. everything is edgyveg. Twitter is edgyveg. Actually, Facebook's edgy, edgy, edgy veg. Yeah, TikTok. I have a TikTok now. It's the edgyveg. So that one's different. Oh, you didn't get it. <laughs> no, Someone somebody else edgy picked edgyveg. It's what? like, you remember back Ooh. in the day when people would like steal, like yeah, take yeah, their yeah. websites and make you pay for them? It was kind of like that. It's good that you uh, got that. You got edgy the edgyveg.com or edgyveg.com? The edgyveg.com. It's good that you got this Because domain. somebody That's else good. took edgyveg.com and you, then tried to get $10,000 out of me. You jerks. Dicks. Yeah. 
F them. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a lot of fun. Very honestly, really educational episode and like very, very, I guess, eye opening. I honestly really want to try. Like, I did the vegetarian. Th- I'm doing the vegetarian thing, but I think I'm actually gonna go on the blog trying to make some recipes. Yes, I'll do that. Burgers are you can get an impossible burger. I want to make a recipe. I might do the jackfruit. <laughs> you're, you're not invited for that one. You're Greek. Is <laughs> I'm really coming over. Right right I'm, 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 I'm getting hungry and I'm like very <laughs> amped up right now. I know now. George leaves his door open. I'm just gonna walk in there. I know where he lives. That's it. Uh, anyways, guys, if you made it to the end of this episode, thank you for coming. Uh, for coming on, I guess. Thanks. Well, thank you for coming on. Thank you. So very thank you guys much for, for listening. Me. And uh, yeah, subscribe, like, follow the Edgy Veg, uh, follow your pals, and uh, I think that's it, George. Anything else? Follow your turn. Don't f- your turn. Don't fall. Your turn. Don't fall. Like At it. your turn. Don't fall. Yeah. Check go. out we'll the play. art. Uh, it's we'll real it. good. We'll plug. We're gonna. We'll, we'll do this again. A natural we'll, we'll, we'll do. We'll, a we'll get a big peat. team one. We'll have a. We'll, we'll do a, a roast. Peat. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, guys. Thanks for listening. Until next time. Cheers. See ya. Bye.